A mountain appears in the sea out of nowhere that is 10,000 feet taller than Everest. There's no explanation for why it's there. This is the premise of the book we're going to talk about today, which is Ascension by Nicholas Binge. I picked up this book because Stephen King said it was good. So was this book any good? Well, let's get into it right now. It follows the story of this physicist, Harold Tunmore. He is very well known. He has all these accolades to his name. You know, this is in the 90s. I think it's like 1991. And he goes to New Mexico. He's going to study like the migration of birds. Something is weird with the migratory patterns and they're not behaving how they normally would and all that stuff. So he arrives at his hotel. He's worn out. He just wants to go and relax and kick back for a little bit. He goes in his room and there sits two military types. <laughs> Like, all right, what do you guys want? They don't get into too much specifics because it's all hush-hush confidential, but his curiosity is piqued and they tell him about this mountain that mysteriously appeared somewhere out of nowhere. He, at first, is kind of like, oh, I don't really think I'm interested. And then they tell him a little bit more about it as much as they can. And so he decides he's gonna go because it sounds like it could be a really amazing scientific experience. The knowledge he could gain from it would be pretty awesome. So he goes and they go to this other military area. He talks to this guy, John McAllister, and John McAllister was on this first expedition on the mountain where only two people survived on the expedition and John is one of them. And they're like, you know, we want you to talk to him. They had known each other because I think they had worked together previously. And so he goes in the room and John's just sitting there. Apparently he's just been sitting there for four days. He just sits and he stares straight ahead and he doesn't move. Like when they feed him, he eats, he uses the bathroom, that's it. And so he sits down and he tries to talk to John and John's just like, I've been shown the truth or whatever. And they're like, do you want to do the test? And he takes this deck of cards and he's like, here, Harry, shuffle them up. So Harry shuffles the cards. Before he lays each one down, John is like, queen of hearts, jack of spades, three of diamonds, and names off the whole complete deck. And I don't know if you know the statistical possibility or impossibility of that like how many different combinations it could possibly be for a deck of cards but that's dang near impossible and apparently they had tested this guy over and over again he was not like this until he came back from the mountain so there's that obviously you can see that harold's like what the heck and then john won't really talk about too much how they actually entice him to go is when they tell him the other person who survived the first expedition, and that is Dr. Naoko Tanaka. They had a very close relationship in his past that makes him want to go to make sure she's okay and this, that, and the other. So it kind of hooks him in. And so they go to this strange anomaly that has appeared in the middle of the ocean, but they don't tell him the location of where it is. They're not allowed to know. And then he gets to the mountain. They take him to the initial area. There's 10 other people that are on the team. There's a chemist. There's a meteorologist slash geologist. There's an anthropologist. There's him, the physicist. There's a biologist that does DNA sequencing. And then Naoko was a medic or a field medic and also has this really in-depth medical background. And so they get there and once they're there, they talk to each other. They're kind of briefed and they're still keeping these people in the dark quite a bit. And he wants to go see Naoko and talk to her. She's been through stuff on this mountain and hasn't really talked about it to other people and isn't really clear and forget it's like what exactly happened and so when he goes and tries to talk to her she just like screams her head off so he's like all right well maybe we'll talk later he starts to get to know the rest of the team and the crew and as they journey up this mountain and through this like treacherousness all this strange stuff starts happening the one scientist dr volakova who is the biologist and does dna sequencing she's collecting samples and she finds stuff with like microbes and life that has like rna sequencing that isn't supposed to exist so it's very strange and just the decomposition rate of different minerals and stuff is weird and as they get higher up the mountain time seems to be flexible and ripple and liminal the mountain is made up of all these different types of rock and at some point someone says it seems like the mountain may have been traveling just how it's made up of different stuff and then you have this is in the synopsis too there are these creatures as they get further up the mountain. 
that slither around that may be part of something. And it seems like this mountain affects people in all these really strange ways. And as they get higher up, they get quick to anger. There's this weird, almost dull, not like voices in their heads, but there's something going on that's messing with their thought processes. But everyone feels this urge to get to the top of the mountain because they think the answers are there. But why does everyone feel this way? They just do. And so stuff goes on. People start turning on each other. As you learn more about how time is flexible, what this mountain is, what it's all about. It gets into some really philosophical thought too about belief in God and non-belief in God and questioning of faith and how Harold, Harold used to have a really strong faith, but then he stopped believing in God. And then you have like one of the people has a very strong faith and one of the other ones is like, you know, when people start talking about God, I just don't even listen or blah, 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 blah. So you have these like people of really strong faith and people who do not believe. So you have that element as well. And it's fascinating to see how the situations affect these people and as it goes on and what's at the top of the mountain like will all the answers be given well they will and it's holy crap what a ride it held my attention from the get-go it's really fascinating it's told too in all these letters that harold had sent to his brother's daughter harriet because they used to be close and they used to go do stuff together and travel around also ben his brother uh there was one year they were waiting for him to show up for Christmas and he never did, the brother Harold. And so Ben, at some point, had been looking for him for years. And in 1998, they had Harold declared officially dead because they never found him. 30 years later, one of Ben's friends is like, hey, I was uh, visiting my gran in St. Bridget's Psychiatric Hospital and I swear to God, your brother is there. So he goes there and he finds out, yeah, Harold is there. They're both in their 70s now. When he finds his brother, his brother knows who he is, but he's all like, he's got weird psychosis and stuff. And he just kind of sits at the table and stares off into the distance. He has a briefcase on him and it has all these letters in it. And they were letters that were to Harriet that he never sent because Harriet received three letters, which had some of the story of what happened on the mountain in there. But now he has the rest of them and the story is told through the letters. And it tells of Harold's life too. And that, you know, he was kind of awkward and weird when he grew up, he had this like scientist mind and he was super socially awkward and didn't know how to get along with people. And then he kind of, at some point in his life, breaks out of a shell and like opens himself to love and people and then something tragic happens and he shuts himself off to that and being on this mountain too just opens all that back up. Stephen King said this book was good and my god it is so good. I loved it. If you like sci-fi, if you like stuff that's a little bit philosophical, if you like weird stories, it's fan freaking tastic. I had never heard of this author. I never in a million years would have picked out this book, but I literally saw a Twitter post where Stephen King wished Mother Horror happy birthday. And he was like, hey, you gotta check out this book Ascension by Nicholas Binge. And that stuck in my brain. And I was like, I'm gonna check that book out. I mean, Stephen King recommended it. I like to read other books that authors recommend. And uh, was he right? Yes. <laughs> well, obviously I just said that, but absolutely fantastic. Ascension. Nicholas Binge, if you like sci-fi, read it, do it, it's great. And then let me know if you liked it. Maybe you'll hate it. I don't know. We all have different opinions, so you're allowed to hate it. But I love it. So if you're a fan of sci-fi books, the next video coming up will be about another sci-fi book. So stick around, check it out. And if you had fun hanging out today, hit that subscribe button and come back. See me again. We'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.